if you, for, in this country, you know, they allow transsexuals to come and teach a four-year-old or a three-year-old about their, what do you say, their, their sexual orientation? Yeah, they should. They should? Yeah. So you're okay with your children to have this, what do you say, portrayal of sex before they even understand what it is? At the age of four... No, at appropriate age, I'm okay no, with I, them I, being I, taught I'm about saying this is primary sexual. school. This is primary school and this has happened already. Yeah. Okay? So before they even understand the concept of love, forget about making love. Yes, transsexual <laughs> isn't about sex, it's about gender. I know, but I'm saying this is not only about... Uh, There's one example I gave you. They talk about transsexuality, they even maybe talk about homosexuality, maybe in the future about incest as well. Because you said you would allow it. So if yeah. you would allow it, then you would allow... Why would you not allow... It doesn't make them homosexual. No, but it, 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 it indoctrinates them. That it at, is at, okay at for age, people to... Yeah, at yeah. an age where they don't even understand the basics of love, let alone making love. Anyway, let's you move on from this them point. romantic movies, right? Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Let's move on yes, from this yes. point. But I think what, the point here is this. I mean, there are things yeah. in our society where the society may decide to have a say on this and legislate according to it. Homosexuality being one of them and so on like and so even forth. Even adult content, you know, they don't yeah. allow it before 9 o'clock yeah, yeah. in this country. Why? Yeah. Because they know so, the children are awake. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but you show them Bridget Jones' diary. Or... Yeah, but it, it impacts them, yeah. isn't it? Anyway. That's these are the things, I mean, these are the, the branches when you talk about about concept of religion and the laws from religion or from secular systems. You asked about how do we know God exists and how do we prove this. Now, we came through a particular angle in terms of from the creation to the creator. This is one way of looking at it. And the, 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 the similar uh, example I, I pointed to is like when you see a painting, it shows to a, you a painter. Now that's only one aspect of how we can use our reason to arrive at a conclusion and you know certainty in our heart and our mind that yes there has to be a creator rather than this, this universe itself which is unconscious but you said it is conscious because we are conscious. Once we attribute the universe some consciousness, will and energy and knowledge to it this is in a way deifying it saying yes the universe is God and that is what it's doing. Instead of saying there is this God who has created us for a reason, this universe also has qualities of God, created us, but doesn't want anything from us. And this perspective is taken by certain people for a reason. Because if you think about it, religion is prescriptive. It tells you, do this and don't do this. Okay, Don't harm others, be good, be kind and so on. Don't cheat, don't lie, don't give usury and interest, don't rob people. But there are in this society people who want to exploit others and abuse others and make themselves greater and happier, richer, wealthier, more famous and this and that by exploiting others. And you can only do this by not in a moral way. Most of the time it's by cheating and, and all, all these things uh, I mentioned. Religion prevents these things from happening and they go against this for this reason saying, I cannot subscribe I to a religion. Inherent belief there that people are born sinful. I don't think. No, we don't. No, this is this is Christianity. We are Muslims. We believe we are born in a, with a clean slate, and we make our life how we want it in terms of whether we're going to live a good life or a bad life. If we follow a bad life, we'll have a bad consequence. Yeah. But, but what about people who have been victimized in childhood and become bad first people? They need to be helped. Supported, corrected, yeah, yeah, yeah. rehabilitated. Yeah. Yeah, there has to be a full mechanism to support them and bring them back into society and acceptability and rectify them. Yeah. Absolutely. Islam has a full you know, um, a program for these individuals when, when, when they are abused or victimized like this. So coming back to this point. Actually, that's, that's a good point about, you know, how would you, as a person based on your ideology, how should these victims be supported? and how should the, the people who, who made them victims be punished? Would you consider any form of, what do you say, um, justice for the people who abuse these children? How what do you would you the criminals? Yeah. To be like, very honest about myself, I believe in very utopian kind of world where I believe justice should system should be very healing, both for criminals and victims. Okay, so let's say somebody raped 
you brought up this earlier, rape is objectively wrong. Yeah. So somebody raped a woman, how should the rapist be punished? Or a man, because, because men are also are getting raped by yeah. people. That's why I said rapist. Yeah. 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 So I see rape as a, as a result of societal conditioning yeah. main, more than just individual action. So ideally, I would reform society before punishing a rapist. Like how? Would you stop pornography, for example? Because that is one of the causes, you know that. The drivers. Trafficking. Yeah. One of the causes is pornography. And earlier, the reason I brought this up, because I wanted to explore this further, to see the consequences and the impact of these things, which are the evils of society. And you know, in Islam, the reason alcohol is banned, the reason intoxicants like drugs are banned, is because of this, because they have far-reaching consequences beyond just the individual abusing those, what do you say, intoxicants. And that is the reason, that is the beauty, that is how we understand that the Creator knows us better than ourselves. Because the reason the Creator, God Almighty, has banned this, what do you say, substance. No, no, look, creating, why did human beings create a knife? Yeah? You wouldn't ban all knife, would you? The reason, because somebody somebody misuses that knife to murder someone. It doesn't mean you're going to ban all knives in the world, are you? Because maybe the knife can be used to save life, maybe to have food on your table. Like, you know, those cavemen, they, they need Operating theater, surgery, <laughs> yeah. right? So the question about why did God create people? No, God did not create people to be evil. God created people with the faculty of choice, knowing good and bad telling them what is good and bad and people abuse or you know not use them appropriately and they misuse them that choice the faculty of the intellect that they have people can misuse and do it for the wrong purposes and that, that they become exploiters and rapists and murderers and ethnic cleansers and so on but our creator says look we've given you these two things we have inspired you in the good and the bad it's but we don't want us. you to we don't Not want only inspired he's instructed us specifically god how to yeah. use the things which are wholesome and good yeah. and how not to misuse them as well. For example, look, if I were to tell you to eat food unmoderated or drink water unmoderated, then even water can be dangerous for you. Yes? Even the food which nourishes you can be dangerous for you if it's unmoderated. What I I'm mean, saying... If yeah. you were, say, uh, in cold and dying and if you only had alcohol to survive would you still drink it or not for survival alcohol would not help you survive would it yeah i mean to keep you but warm. in general in general principle islam says look if it's a life saving measure Those then anything that was forbidden to you you can consume or take use make use of them to survive only that amount that makes you survive, survive. like so pork, pork is the, something there's, is an forbidden. there's an exception yeah. to the rule but so the general rule is that you avoid certain foods and drink which are not beneficial for you, not healthier for you. God says, eat of the things which are tayyib, which is halal and tayyib, pure and acceptable and, and, and something that God is you know, permissible. So, yeah. so the question which I want, to, I want you to ponder upon is like, what would you consider to be the right punishment for a rapist that will, that will not only stop him from further rapes, but also make him realize and others to realize that this is ultimately wrong. Yeah, I feel like there should be a psychological reform system where what do you mean? Just speak to the rapist to be good. Perpetrator should be able to realize and see his mistake for what okay. it is. Let's say you go through this psychoanalysis and this psychotherapy of his whatever therapy it is, and that rapist rapes again. Then what are you going to do? Then that system failed, right? Good. So, what would be the right system? No, because this has already happened. You know that. No, this, that's say, that's this has already been implemented, yeah. and it has failed. Okay. No. Okay. So, what is the next system now? Same. But Same. But so, yeah, more yeah, therapy, yeah. and then it fails again. Then what do you do? No, I'm saying that this trial and error has system. already been implemented, and it has already shown that it has failed on certain individuals who are repeat offenders, so repeat murderers, repeat rapists. Yes, and repeat abuses. So the question now is, so if do for you this repeat, they are inherently no, I'm not saying inherently. So I'm, I'm saying, asking. I'm saying these people are beyond what he say repair. So what and, do you and, and the only, the only way for for certain things to get 
it's, it's basically to get rid of them. So would they you, don't they don't harm somebody else. Would you else. punish them? Would you put behind bars or would you implement yeah. even severe punishment system for them? Because what do you suggest? There has a question I'm asking you. If if you have all these therapies which are failing, so you have you have tried all the non-violence and understand because you have been indoctrinated as a Jain, you would never consider harming that person. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I understand because no, you're coming from a background no, which no, no, which is non-violence, which is ahimsa. Yeah. No. 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 I'm saying in terms of uh, my views as a human because I I genuinely don't believe in justice that doesn't heal people. Okay. So if this repeat rapist, you wouldn't. Whom, 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 very... whom are you being, uh, what do you say, um, I, are you being more intolerant and more friendly and more, what do you say, uh, tolerant towards this person who has victimized yeah, probably, so many course, people? lock him up, but uh, practically lock him up, but I'm saying we, I, we should still be investing in the system that reforms them. Yeah, I, I agree. Look, there are there is rehabilitation. I'm not saying no, but what I'm saying is that there are certain individuals for him, for whom this repeat offense is is really the way of life. Yes, yeah. they can't do without yeah. it. Just yeah. like an alcoholic cannot be without his alcohol, yeah. or a drug abuser cannot be without his drug. For yeah. these guys, this is yeah. their way of life. Yeah, probably, yeah. So if you're going to just say, okay, what, lock them up for life? Yeah. Throw the key away? Yeah. Okay. And do you think that's his life? Do you think that's a life worth living? It shouldn't be. I mean, it shouldn't be, but we don't have a system to deal with them. Okay. So you're ultimately harming someone, isn't it? You're yeah. going against your own principle by doing this. Yeah. You see, so Thanks. this is Say all this. this this is what I mean. So even your own principles, you would discard, given the circumstance. Yeah. How is that? How is that helping? If you're not going to abide by your own principles, then those principles are meaningless. Also drink to survive, right? In exception. No, no, but that's a matter of life and death. That's different. Here also For, people no, it's not a matter of life and death. The, the this guy is the one who is abusing and taking the life of others. Yeah, then it's so it's it's not of his. Life and death of other people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm I'm saying the victims are not getting the justice which they deserve. Yeah, that's why we okay? are locking him up. So it's so let me ask you death. this: if if even taking the life, you know, to be honest, it wouldn't it wouldn't serve ultimate justice. Ultimate just, justice can only be served by God Almighty in the in the hereafter, because even if if this someone like Hitler has killed thousands and millions or responsible for killing thousands and millions, he has got only one life, and you, even if you give him capital punishment, I don't I don't think that's going to be enough to serve justice for this millions whom he was responsible for killing. So, is we, justice served? Yeah. Is the question. Even if you were to apply capital punishment on Hitler, if, if you were to, would it really justify and say justice is served by that punishment or he deserved even more? You can't kill him more than once, can you? Once you, you know, so kill him by lethal injection or hang him or whatever, you can't kill but him more than once. that's coming from a point of vengeance, right? But it's not a vengeance, it's about justice. Justice is not necessarily just an you know, understanding of vengeance in this kind. When you have a criminal and you have a victim, then kill him. To, be, just to be justice to be served means that criminal must pay a penalty. Mm -hmm. That's not vengeance. That is the requirement of justice. Yeah, and then if he pays by his life, it is justice. So right? if he pays only once, mm -hmm. when he killed not one person, mm -hmm. thousands of persons or people, mm -hmm. how is that serving justice? Are then you saying justice is served? Ah, good question. So what else needs to be done? What else are we expecting then? And this can only, this is the kind of justice which only God can deliver. The reason for that is because... You he, eat meat, right? Say again? You eat meat. Yeah, I do. I'm, so a, probably, I'm not a vegetarian. Yeah, no. What I like I'm, my lamb yeah, biryanis. But what I'm saying life. is that is also life. And probably you have killed as many animals no. as Hitler killed people. We, we take life with the yeah. permission of God because these, you know, we have a perspective about in this life. I don't do it for what sport. Are roles I do it no, yeah, yeah, to yeah, nourish yeah. myself. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Taking the life of a human being is not the same as taking the life of an animal. Why? Because the value is different. How? Okay. Do you have pets? Do you have pets? Do you have pets? Yeah. What do you feed them? What do you have? Cat or a dog? Dog. A dog. What do you feed your dog? Vegetarian food? 
No, no, no. No? Oh, you no, feed him. I, I'm not saying about me. I'm saying about you. No, no, but I'm using your principle. Yeah. You're saying that you're saying it is wrong for me to no, be be I'm a non-vegetarian. Is there a value difference? Because value difference is there. You I, do not, you do not treat your dog the same way as you would treat your kids, would you? No. Why is that? Because the value you realize is different. Okay. No, its needs are different. Say again? Its needs are different. No, no, even the value, needs. even the value is different. So for example, both your dog and your kids need food. Do you invite them to the dinner table at the same time? On the dinner table? The but needs are same, they both them. need food, right? Yeah. But, but the I way you treat your dog them. is not definitely the same as you treat your children. But I don't, that's not because there is a value difference. No, no, you, you value them differently. There's no doubt about it. So you this. value the life of an animal and a human being the same, is it? No, I'm asking you, why don't you value Because in our belief system, in our paradigm, the Creator has created us and given us all of this for our benefit. Even the, the planets and other stars and so on, we can utilize them for our own benefit. So the food that we eat, the animals and so on, these are provisions for us. But we, of course, we cannot make that's, commit excesses. That's an we cannot commit view. excesses. We have to, like, for example, only consume for, for food rather than sports. So we can't did go and hunting. what she said? She said it's a narciss narcissistic view. It's like, oh, we humans so important, everything is but you, for you, us. You, you, even though you so, are saying this, you consciously do this. So you, you treat your animals and your children differently. There's no doubt about this. Do you think human beings and animals have I'm the saying, same value? No, no. I, overall, I do believe religions have this narcissism aspect. I'm just Not religion. No, no. Even you as a non-religious person, you treat your animals, your pets and your children differently. There's okay. no doubt about this. Have you, have you ever taken antibiotics? Yeah. How many bacteria have you killed? <laughs> no, I'm Do you consider the value of life of a of a bacteria the same as the value of a human being? Yeah, so they should be asking Sorry, for did justice you say yes? as well. Sorry? I mean uh, no, I mean what I'm trying to say is so I should be they should be asking me for justice as well. No no what I'm saying is if you consider the life of every living thing the same, mm. then that means you should not take antibiotics or any antivirals or any antifungals, anything, because these will probably destroy the life of a fungus, of a bacteria, of a virus, of all this, um, you know. No, I do that because I don't think organisms. of it as a value. I think of it as a survival. Sorry? I don't think of it as a value. I think of it as a survival. I mean, you I don't could, value I, them equally. If I you could eat meat, it would be no, no. my do you survival. Value, do you value all living beings? A, I am oh sort God. of lost here. Do you value all living beings equally? Yeah. equally? Yeah. So that means a bacteria, a very harmful bacteria that mm. gives us infection. Mm. I could kill it if, I, if it means... She's saying she does it for survival. survival. So Not you, you do I it for it survival? Has a, it has no value. So you would kill I mean, it for survival? I think this mentality of value and power plays also very toxic. No, it's not. You do, like I said, you do it, whether you like it or not, you would treat non-humans differently to humans, whether subconsciously or consciously. And you do it on a daily basis without even realizing it. So anyone who tells me that they value humans and non-humans the same, they're not being genuine. And I mean this. The reason for that is because we wouldn't, we, we, we wouldn't be, we, we, we wouldn't no, of be course, keeping, but not the yeah. same as a human life, would you? Do, do, do people Just do consider? I mean, humans do they? Can express I'm the pain. Hmm? Just because humans can express oh, the pain. So can animals. Animals, animals can, can express, express pain their too. emotions in a different way, but yeah. they do express it. Yeah. For example, if you were to take uh, a cat on a leash and a dog on a leash, <laughs> it wouldn't be the same, would it? Yeah. Yes, me, because they're two different animals. Let me put a scenario. You have your own child and you have your own pet dog. Hmm. You can only save one of them. Child. Why would you spare the child and it's, not the dog? Because it's close to me, right? It's not... So value. now you see the difference it's your comes value. in. It's, it's your value judgment. So, so you, no. it's not only. It's what is close to me. My okay, let's let's forget about your child. Somebody else's Somebody child. Somebody child and your then own what? pet. We have no relation to that child. Yeah. And it's this a is your stranger pet. to you. Uh -huh. The the ship is sinking. You got some rats on the corner, one corner, and you got a child on the other corner. The ship is sinking. You are you only allowed to take one entity with you to save their life. Would you take a rat or would you take a human? Human. Why? You have to go. Like I said, consciously or subconsciously, you as a human being will always 
save the life or, or value the life of a human higher than non-human. And that's okay. exactly what we are saying. Agreed. Okay. Now, say, if, I mean, if you have option to eat a human baby, say again? Uh, if you have option to eat a human baby, a chicken baby or a plant, why don't you eat plant? Sorry, if you have the option to? Eat human baby. Eat human baby. Wow. Eat this chicken. is some <laughs> extreme <laughs> Uh, Examples three, is ringing now. Three options. Yeah. Human, baby, human chicken, chickens, baby, and plants. Plant. Why not go for plants? You know what? I would rather die than eat a human baby alive. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because to me, to me, to kill a, a child is is one of the most heinous things you could do. Yeah. All right. And and this is something that Allah doesn't give us the option to kill another to save yourself yeah. for for food. That's what, for that's food. For that's you. different. That's but you know, you will always find. Trust for me. For me. If if there is a human same. child there then there is definitely something else to survive because the, the baby is surviving so there's something else to survive do you know but plants have feelings too right yeah do you know that <laughs> so even plants shouldn't be an option to <laughs> they eat they don't have feelings they don't they, have feelings they do they have life they don't have feelings plants, oh, you know, don't have, plants feelings. have feelings yeah no, they don't. No, no, how can you say that with certainty? no 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 it is you proven it. it's proven there's a whole there's a whole scientific discipline called plant neurobiology yeah, people don't know yeah it's not called feeling plant neurobiology not human neurobiology we are learning now for example when a caterpillar goes along the tree on the leaves and start eating one leaf do you know what happens that leaf sends a signal to all the other leaves on the branch and so on saying so look at caterpillar is coming and it's, it's you know it has its imminent own nervous system signal yeah. you know they have feelings they express the feeling in a different way they release chemicals to express that feeling. So people in the past didn't realize that because you know what, when we have vegetarians and vegans just like eat vegetables only in relation to animals, now they're realizing now even plants have the same issues. Well, okay, you shouldn't be eating plants as well, if, using the same logic. They go into something else then. They say, oh, it has to be sentient, it has to be consensual, lots of different things. So coming back to this example, we say, look, God has given us a certain provision Say so this you can eat, this you cannot eat. This all links to our understanding of who we are in this life and who created us and what is permissible and not permissible. That's why coming back to this question about how do we know God exists and how do we know God created for a purpose, this is something that we can use our mind and our heart when we look at it. If I remember you said how can we be certain? In my letter that I wrote to you about, you know, we met on Sunday and so on, we discussed all of these things. If I say, okay, here is, um, by the way, my phone number and your phone number, is that correct? And so on. And all that timestamp will make you convinced that this is a genuine letter from genuine myself. This is how the creator gives evidence in his guidance, the book, the revelation that he sends, the Quran, with this genuine signatures of the divine saying, these are the things that will make sure you believe that it is from your creator. And the Quran gives those evidences for people to then have certainty saying, yes, now I'm sure this is from our creator. Now I can be convinced that I don't have to worry about like, oh, how do I know which book and that book? This is what the Quran does. Because otherwise anyone can claim, would you not agree that, oh, God tells you to do this. God tells you to give charity to my organization, for example. Yeah. You know how people yeah, are looting and exploiting yeah. all these things, lots of these fake charities, whatever. So the Quran, have you read the Quran, a bit of it at all? Okay. The Quran, we say, is, is a book that is a guidance from God, which is not the words of Prophet Muhammad Islam, which who gave to us. It is a verbatim words of God in Arabic language, of course, because the Prophet Muhammad Islam was an Arab, with the message from God in terms of who God is, who we are, what we are supposed to do in this life, what we should be doing and not doing, avoiding and definitely doing, and what to expect when we die after life. So where we come from, what are we doing here, and where we are going. Who created us and for what purpose, and how we should fulfill our purpose. Not only these instructions and guidance, but at the same time saying, if you don't believe it's this from God, then this is how you can disprove it. Quran comes with its own falsification tests. Tells you, if you don't, you know, critical thinking minded people, that's how you can falsify this book or objectively accept it that it's from God. And it gives you several examples that. 
So this is what perhaps your next step would be to look into the Quran and say, look, how is it that a book actually proves itself? It's, it's from the divine author. It would be an interesting one to read. And especially when, if you think about Muslims are saying, you know, we, we need to be critical, then perhaps it has some elements in which I can critically analyze it and then see what it has for me, um, what it offers uh, for me. Yeah? So our belief is such that we are here not as a product of chance. There's one creator who created us and we should be grateful, thankful and praising and worshipping this creator and f following our life and fulfilling our life in the ways that our creator wants. So that once we die, that's not the end of it. There will be another life in which we can be going to a place of good, happiness, bliss, joy, tranquility, peace, rather than going to another place in which there will be suffering and sorrow and misery and punishment and torture and so on. We don't want to go that because there are these two places in the hereafter. This life and there will be another life called the hereafter, either in a place of happiness or a place of you know, suffering. Which one we should be after? The one in happiness. Because this life is nothing in compared to the eternal life that waits here, hereafter. People spend their, this you know, whole life concentrating on this world, not realizing that this world compared to the eternal life is not even a blinking of an eye. So we are being neglectful of the real life in the hereafter just because of the temporary amusement and pleasure of this life. So, I mean, I would like to, you know, seriously ask you to read the Quran, read the biography of Prophet Muhammad Islam, read about the message of Islam, because often we may have just left ourselves saying this is a cultural thing, or oh, you're Muslims, you're from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Indonesia, China, whatever it might be. And we left it like this, we live like, but we didn't realize that religion or our belief in our creator has to transcend all of these differences. I can't just think about like Islam as a Arab religion or Zayn as a this religion. It has to be transcendent to, to the truth. Truth is for everyone, yeah. not only for you know people in that locality and so on. Yeah. So I would really highly recommend you to read the Quran and reflect on the things that we've said. Okay. If it makes sense, take it further. And you have the opportunity to, you know, you know, if you come back again, ask us questions, ask Muslims questions. And, you know, ask yourself in your heart and your mind, which one makes more sense? In a, in a world in which everything is just a rearrangement of matter without any conscious designer, or really that tells you in your heart, deep inside in your heart, in, in your mind, there seems to be an organizer. There seems to be someone who's controlling all of these things. Someone for a reason. Like, you know, it's, it's not simply just coincidence. If you really feel this, you know, develop that thought further and say, okay, fine, you know, what is my purpose in this life then? Am I just a particle of dust floating around and I end up a dust? Or there is a purpose of my creation and am I fulfilling that purpose? And we talked about the Pascal's wager yeah. um, in which like, you know, if, what if in reality, as it all points to, there is a hereafter and there is creator and there is heaven, there is hell, there's all the risk of losing and not being successful. So at least we should be more responsible and more accountable for what we do and, and explore these options and say, look, I want to be successful in this life and in the hereafter. And that was why in Islam, we don't neglect this life. We don't just simply say, oh, let's become like uh, monks and, you know, sannyasi and others like go to into a particular place and, and leave the whole world. Don't get married, don't eat anything. No. We have life in this world and we live, we be happy, we joke and we, <laughs> we, 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 all of this that everyone has, but within a boundary of permissibility. We're not going to just do everything and everything just because your whims and desires tells us. Yeah. So we would not say, okay, fine, you know what, you just go and become X, Y and Z. No, there is a moral compass, there's a moral code, which is better for the society, better for the individual, because the one who created us knows us more than we know ourselves. And this is what the Creator told us. Live your life accordingly. You will have a good life in this world and you will have, of course, the best life in the hereafter. But if you don't and you become stubborn and arrogant and you're neglectful and so on, then the consequences is yours in the hereafter. 
we don't want to risk that because the, one of the reasons we are discussing and to learn from each other is to to have the understanding that you know the way we can achieve you know ultimate success is to reawaken ourselves in terms of what we haven't done and what we should be doing and then you know we can appreciate better for example you know once i i, and I didn't even realize zanes for example are vegan as vegetarians imagine if i didn't know that and invited a friend to a burger party you know that would be like quite offensive for example and, and not in a good part and that's why learning about each other's um, perspectives is, is quite useful but in in doing so also we can come to common grounds we can come to even a, a, a common understanding in which we say yeah you know what let us all agree to accept this message from our creator and be part of that and then we start you know disseminating this information to all others so that we all can be happy and successful and this is what the islamic the the message conveys is we convey our message as best as we can so that people themselves when they're open to it and they hear it they see it they say okay fine yeah i want it i want to accept it. i want to be like it i want to follow this particular path because remember we are all following a path whether you love someone and you want to be with them you know we should have this understanding of love of our creator the one who created us if indeed there's a creator the one who gave us life should i not be thankful you would be thankful for someone if they you know cured you from your disease and things like this right the one who gave us all of this our, our good health our life and everything it's, it's, it's you know high time now that we are thankful to our creator we should be grateful and this is the essence of worship in islam okay yeah. Thanks. Okay. It's, it's, it was a pleasure meeting you and speaking to you. Um, as I said, always there's a learning day. Okay, We learn from each other and hopefully we come to a better understanding and then hopefully we all follow the same path. Same path of success, same path of tolerance and relationship building and, and you know, shortening the gap of 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 this this people have this you know differences between us and so on so even after all of that you want to you know live your life according to you whatever because whatever you have but at least we can understand each other so the element of hate is gone away the element of uh, what we call this bigotry is gone away the element of the, you know some kind of um you know these people ideas of belittling someone or mocking someone it should be going away but we hope that in that discussion, at least we have come to understanding of the, the need of our own salvation, meaning our own success in this life and hereafter by following the one true path of God. Because there is this question about people can follow any path to God. In Islam, God says no, there is only one, one path to God. Every other path will take you to hellfire. Our Prophet Muhammad Islam, he draw on the sand a line straight line and several lines going away this way and sideways is it this line that's the line that will take you to god to paradise and all the other lines there's a devil or shaitan you know like an evil forces taking you away to a size to mislead you from going there so our life you will find there'll be a lot of distractions and obstacles and desires and things which will try to lead you away or astray from fulfilling the purpose of your creation so what we would wish for you is that you follow the true path, the path of Islam, and then you achieve success in this life and you achieve success in the hereafter. Okay? Do you have any questions or anything that you would like to share with us? Something that we can no. learn from you no. too as well? <laughs> we talked a lot, I guess. All right. Thanks, thanks okay. for your time. Thank you for your time and yeah. appreciate all, you know, all that you. time. This is the channel called Dawa Wise on YouTube. Okay, I can download it from Oh yeah, yeah. you subscribe yeah, and then you, c you won't miss any notification. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just take a picture. Yeah. And, Thank you. and this is the logo of that, by the way. This is how it looks. Okay. <laughs> so when you go into our eyes, that's how it looks. Yeah? Okay. okay. We, okay. we don't have a copy of the Quran. I wanted to give you one, but uh, the, the person... No, he's gone. He's gone. Uh, okay. Abdullah is not here.
But anyways, if you come next time, yeah, we can give you a free week. copy. Yeah, yeah, yeah no of problem. course. So. You'll okay. be here next week. Or? Sure. You take and next time we need to be, be more prepared for the cold because it was quite cold. Yeah, today. Next week is Christmas. Uh, the next day after Christmas, isn't it? So yeah. Boxing Day. I don't know if people will come, but uh, yeah, inshallah we'll, yeah. we'll try. But if not, we want after that. Yeah. Maybe next year. Yes, of course. <laughs> next year. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thanks okay. a lot. You take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.